Hey YouTube, um, well this will be a how to breed leopard geckos video and basically first off I'm just going to show you the vitamins that I use. Um, so first off, these are the three vitamins that I really like to use. Um, that's just some stuff that I have to use up. So um, yeah, so anyway I'm going to start off with this. This is Osteoforum SA. Um, this is like a veterinarian approved uh, calcium type of uh, vitamin mixture. That's really good for animals, and I saw that Sasebeck used this, so I decided to use it. Um, this is Vitonate. Vitonate's a really great um, vitamin. I use it for a lot of my animals. I use it for my birds. I use it for my sugar gliders, and I use it for my geckos. So it's pretty much a great vitamin mineral supplement, and I really love it. And it's just really good. And my old old breeder, like the first gecko that I got. Um, the breeder that I got him from, Rex, uh, he used this all the time, and he strongly suggests it, and Sasebeck and many other breeders use this, so this is also very good to get. Um, then next I use Repcal. Um, this is really good. It's really uh, healthy for your reptiles, and I find it to help out. And what I do is I have a Rep Decalcium with D3 that I'm just using up um, because I have a ton of it. And this is a pretty big container, so I'm just using it up. Um, so, yep. Yeah. And I do have a vitamin mixture thing right here. So, what I do is I do... This is just... Uh, you guys can pause it, write it down, whatever. So, vitamin A, I did one cup. Repcal, I did one-eighth of a cup. Osteoforum, SA, I did one-fourth of a cup. And rep calcium, I did one eighth. So I'm just using that that rep decalcium. So if you guys just want to use rep cal, just do one fourth of a cup and just don't even do this, and it's just good enough. So one fourth of a cup rep cal, one fourth of a cup um, osteoform SA, and one cup vitonate, and that would be fine. So that's what I do, and then I just mix it all together and I put it in this little bottle. See, I crossed out Vitonate, but it's just a vitamin mixture, and it kind of, it looks like that. So, yeah, works really well. I haven't had problems with it. Um, next up, talking about female leopard geckos and males. Alright, so in order to breed your leopard geckos, you need your geckos to be up on the right weight. So, you have to have... Um, both geckos over 50 grams. Females, I like them to be 55, but if you do have them, like, if one's a slow grower, but she eats really well, um, you can breed her at 50, and if it's just strong, you still can breed it at 50. Um, I've recently bred a female leopard gecko at 50 grams. And I'll show you. Here is a 50 gram leopard gecko female that I bred. There she is. Um, here, let me see. So, I bred her. She's 50 grams. So, that, it is okay to breed 50 gram females. I don't breed anything less than 50 grams. So, for females, 50 grams or higher is really good. If you, I like it to be 55. That's kind of my number that I like it to be. So, if I can get to 55, I will do it. But, that female was ovulating for... Um, three months, and I wanted to breed her, and she was 50 grams, so, yeah, had to do it. Um, now, I'm just going to show you what ovulation is. In order to breed your geckos, you need them to ovulate first. And what an ovulum is, is it's basically a sign that tells you that the gecko is ready to breed. So, if you can see those dots right underneath, those white dots, see those reddish-pink dots right there? Right there, I'm kind of focusing in on it. Um, those are the ovulums. And you need geckos to show ovulation in order to breed them. So this female is ovulating. I have not bred her yet. So I'm going to breed her in this course of this video. Um, now this female, let's just check the weight. I know she, how much she weighs, but for the purpose of this video. You'll need your gram scale. And basically, this is all by grams. So 50 grams is the minimum breeding weight for females. Come on, she's like stuck on my PJs. So she weighs, that's not how much she weighs. 
She weighs like 78 grams, really. It's saying like 74, but it's really not. It's 78. Um, she weighs 78 grams, so she's definitely ready to breed. And she's not eating because she's ovulating for a while, so that's why she's lost weight. She used to be like 80 grams. So what I do when I breed my leopard geckos is I like to take out the food and water dish. So she's definitely ready. Now the male leopard geckos, males can be a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to clean out the whole thing because I like when it to be clean when my geckos breed. Um, when male leopard geckos breed... Um, they can be a little bit smaller to breed, but I normally like 50 grams. I think that's a really good minimum value for males as well. So, um, yeah. This male is smaller. He is 47 grams. So, it, for the he's doing the job, though. So, that's all that really matters at this point. Um, but this is a Maxno Radar. And males are pretty much... Uh, mature at a younger age. They can really breed at a younger age and younger weight. I'm not even sure how old this male is. He could be uh, about six months old, so I don't know for all I know because I got him from Sasebeck when he was 18 grams, so yeah, he could be about six months old right about now. Um, but yeah, he's going to be breeding to this female, and I'm just going to show you a gecko without ovulation real quick. So I have her tank all cleaned. A gecko without ovulation. Here's a female raptor. Um, her name is Chaos. Chaos is not ovulating right now. As you can see, there's no red pink dot. That's a normal belly. So yeah, that's normal. So she's not ovulating, so she's not ready to breed. Now, ovulation comes with time. So not necessarily do you have to trigger ovulation. It, mostly it's when your geckos are ready in the year to breed. So you really don't trigger ovulation. I was talking a little bit about that um, in the, what do you call it, in the past. And that was for when geckos ovulate and they stop and you want to trigger it again. It was um, basically what I was trying to do was think of a plan on how to get a female to re-ovulate in the same season. But I ha haven't had to do that because my male got up to weight and he's all good to go. So basically what I do, I take out everything when I breed geckos and I like to put in the male. So my male's pretty chill. Just pick him up. There he is. I put him in. Now what I do is I always watch just to make sure that they breed. If they don't breed, that's okay. So the female is ovulating. I always keep off the top just in case if something bad happens or one attacks the other. You never know. So I just watch them. And normally the male will start vibrating his tail because he'll smell the ovulation of the female. Now that female is a lot bigger than the male, but it will be fine. Um, a smaller male can breed with a uh, bigger female and a big male can breed with a smaller female as well. So it does work out. So basically what you're going to need when a gecko breeds is you're going to need a... Um, lay box. So what my setups are for breeding females, um, here I'm just going to show you a lay box really quick. Now this is a um, new style of lay box that I'm using. Um, it has a hole cut in the top. I used an X-Acto blade, um, X-Acto knife, whatever, um, and I stabbed the hole in it and then used scissors and cut it around it and then I taped the edges. Um, now some people burn off the edges and they burn it around it with a soldering iron. I've had success with that. I tried doing it once, and then I think I caught something on fire, and yeah. So I just do this. I mean, everyone's methods is different, and this doesn't hurt my geckos. It's nice and smooth, and yeah. So that's pretty much it. What I use for my lay box, I don't use, um, there's the male vibrating his tail. That's what I'll do when he starts uh, wanting to mate. Then I'll bite the female. And then I'll go in for the mating. So I think this is a really good video so far. There might be a part two. So that's exactly what you want to happen when you're breeding leopard geckos. You want the male to bite the female. Okay. See, he's a young male. So it's just like, he's starting off. He's pretty good at it, though. He's had some practice. So he should be moving. Sometimes they just stop and they go slow. It's, um... 
like they stop like that, and then he'll start up again once someone moves, or he'll move. Um, that's normal. So, yep. He'll get back in it. But that's what leopard gecko breeding is, basically. They'll uh, mate, um, they'll bite each other. It's alright if they bite each other like that. That's fine. Sometimes the females will even reject the males and bite back. That's just the females saying that they aren't ready right yet. So you just got to keep on trying to introduce the male. Separate, introduce, separate, introduce. Um, that's okay to do. Um, you can also leave in the males if they don't breed right away. That's another thing that I've done. I did that last night with um, him and an eclipse head bell because I was trying to get a split clutch. and I've never. It's kind of just like a trial thing. I've never done it. And I want to see if it can be done. I've heard things that could be done, but wasn't sure. And I left him in. He didn't breed right away. But then, in the middle of the night, I heard a vibrating of the tail. I walked over to the tank, and I saw a mating with her. So it just goes to show you that they do breed, um, even if you aren't seeing it. So sometimes if they don't breed right away, you can leave them in together. Especially if they're not like harming each other or anything. So, that's another tip that I give you guys. Um, so yeah. And you can see, he's trying to, um, he's not positioned right. Um, he might be. See, he's getting it. And that's a successful breed. See, the tail raises up. That's what you want. So I'll leave him in here for a while. That's successful. That's a successful breeding. So that's what you're looking for. So this actually turned out to be a really great video. Um, I'm going to do a part two just to show you what I'm going to do and how I'm going to set up this female. So, um, yeah, you got to see her, him mate. Um, he's pretty good about it when I separate him and mate him again. So I'm really happy with um, him. And um, there's another breeding success. So just had to show you guys. And, yeah. That's a successful breeding when they lift up the tails and their two tails are like touching each other. So, there will be a part two of this video. So, watch for it.